we will spend 10 minutes for you to take the quiz. So on Wednesday, we talk about the circuit and we talk about the resistor and the capacitor. So the resistor actually is um, a conductor. We have a battery connected with the switch and there is a conductor. This conductor can, will assume energy. And this is uh, the circuit. And we know the battery provides the voltage uh, is V and the resistance is R. And we can also use a current meter in the circuit to measure the, the current. And we will find the current is equivalent anywhere on the cable. So if the current is I, we will find that the current uh, flow from the positive terminal, this positive terminal, this negative terminal, the stuff from the positive terminal to the resistor, then go back to the negative terminal. So the Ohm's law tell us if we have a voltage, we have a resistance and a current, then uh, the resistance is equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by the current. This is Ohm's law. Okay. And if we have uh, two resistor, for example, one is R1, the other is R2. And we want to know what's the current um, through each resistor. Suppose the voltage is V provided by the uh, battery and the, uh, the current through the resistor one and the current through the resistor two could be calculated by the Ohm's law. So I1 is equal to voltage over the R1 and I2 is equal to the voltage over R2. And let's see, if we have a larger R1 and a smaller R2, then we will have a smaller I1, but larger I2. Right? So if the resistor is large, then the current is small. And there is a problem if we have R1 um, is very, very large and uh, the R2 is very, very small. Then we will have the current through the first resistor is much less than the current through the second resistor. So there is a, uh, there is a case if the R2 goes to zero. What will, hap what will happen? And the I1 through the first resistor will be very, very small than the I2. So the I2 will go to infinity and I1 will go to zero. So that means the R2, the resistance, Go to very, very small. Suppose this is a wire. We have R1, but the R2 is very, very small. It looks like a wire. I just connected with a wire. Then I will have R2 equal to zero. Then that means no current through the R1. And the current through the R2 will go to infinity. So in this case, if the current goes to infinity, goes to infinity, the battery will damage. So the battery damage. So in this case, we have to avoid uh, this phenomenon occurs. So we need to um, put a resistor near the battery. Then in this case, if there is a path with zero resistance, then it doesn't uh, burn the circuit because there is a protection resistors. Protection. Protection resistance and to help and the current doesn't go to infinity. So this is very important. 
And if the R2 equal to zero, then we call it the R1 is shorted by R2 or by a wire. Because if we have an ideal wire, then the resistance is zero. Then all the current goes to the R2, not goes to R1. Then um, we have very large current and we need to avoid this case. If this is a resistor, and the next one we talk about is the capacitor. Capacitor and are two parallel plates. And we have a um, very large plate and connect with a battery. This is a battery with positive terminal, negative terminal, and this is a capacitor. And the capacitor will have positive charge on the top, negative charge on the bottom. And after the charge is completed, and the electric field between these two plates is stable. It's an electric field and we have the voltage for the battery and we have the charge on the plate and what else we have capacitance c and um, the relation between the capacitance the voltage and the charge um, apply for this equation c the, char the capacitance equal to the charge on the plate divided by the voltage across the capacitor in and also we have uh, the capacitance is determined by the geometry of the plate. That is, this is equal to the epsilon a constant times the surface area of the plate divided by the separation. The distance between the two plates is D. So this determines the capacitance. And the electric field between the two plates actually is equal to the voltage divided by the separation. We can use this equation because the electric field is uniform between the capacitor. And uh, if the E is not uh, uniform, for example, if the capacitor are not parallel, something like this, we have curvature, then the electric field look like this. Then in this case, we can't use E equal to V over E. This doesn't equal. We have to use the derivative to calculate the electric field. Okay, so this is only applied for the electric field in a uniform distribution. Um, let's see. If we have a capacitor and after the charge complete, then in the circuit, there's no current. So after the charge is done, after the charge is done, there's no current. The charging process is done. There's no current in the circuit. So that means uh, if we have a switch and we close the switch immediately the battery is going to charge the capacitor so there is a current but after the charge is completely uh, is completed then we have zero current so if i have a current as a function of time so when we switch off or we, we close the switch and the current goes to maximum then it decay to zero. So this is uh, uh, the process of the uh, capacitor. And if we're talking about the steady state, that means we're talking about this region. This is steady state. When current equal to zero. So if current equal to zero, according to Ohm's law, 
we can calculate the resistance of this capacitor will be the voltage over the current. Uh, hold on. Yeah, of the current. So voltage is any, any value provided by the battery. So this is uh, uh, some number, number. There's a number here, but the current is zero. If current is zero, that means the resistance is infinite. So that means after the circuit is at a steady state, when you see a capacitor, this capacitor actually breaks the circuit and there's no current in this path. So if I have a battery connect with a resistor, connect with a capacitor, Then this is R, this is C. So at the beginning, if I have switch and I close the switch, then the battery is going to um, charge the capacitor and there's a current flow through the, the, uh, the resistor. But after the time goes to infinity, that means the circuit goes to steady state. Then there's no current through the capacitor. Oh, there's only current through the, through the resistor. Here is some value and not equal to zero. Okay. So in this case, the circuit will be simplified by a battery connected with resistor and connected with some air. So there's no current. You can think about it in this way. So the, all the voltage is on the resistor and all the current is through the resistor. No current through the capacitor. This is a steady state. And if we have a inductor or we call this a, a wire, we have other case. So this is um, the current in the capacitor we have so far. So today I'm going to talk about a new element that is inductor. Inductor actually is a solenoid. It's a wire, a coil. And the wire coiled in a circle, that's a solenoid. And uh, this guy has many um, geometry like the number of turns, number of turns. And we have a cross section area. Area. And we have length. L. Let me use another uh, letter. I use S to represent the length of the length, the length of solenoid. Okay. Then if we have uh, this letter we can um, quantify the inductance. So here, let's talk about the solenoid first. If I have a battery and connect with a resistor, resistor and the battery is V, okay, then we will find that when we have a switch and I close the switch immediately, uh, the current will increase from zero. Okay. So the current start from zero, then jump to some value. So if we take the derivative of the, of the current, we'll get this is equal to infinity because it's not continuous. If this is infinity, that means um, the magnetic field generated by the solenoid is also equal to infinity. Right. And also, uh, if the, uh, the magnetic field generated by the solenoid is infinity, then we can uh, think about it in this way, the voltage, the induced um, voltage by Friday's law is equal to the negative, the cross-section area times the dt dt, 
this is also goes to infinity. So at the beginning, when we turn on the switch, we close the switch, um, the voltage is very high, very high. And the voltage, <clears throat> according to the Lenz's law, is going to oppose the voltage um, provided by the battery. So eventually there was a positive terminal, this is a negative terminal, is it positive, this is a negative. So the induced of voltage is going to against the voltage provided by the battery. Then the result will be no voltage on the resistor. Okay, so this is at the beginning when time equal to zero. But when time go to infinity, that means the circuit goes to steady state. Then the current will be a constant. If the current goes to constant, then the change of, of current over time is equal to zero. The change of magnetic field is also to zero. Then according to the Friday's law, the voltage induced by the inductor or the solenoid is also equal to zero. So no, cur uh, no voltage between the solenoid, so all the voltage from the battery is going to charge the resistor. So the voltage on the resistor is not equal to zero. This is when t equal to zero, when t equal to infinity, then the voltage on the resistor is equal to the voltage of the battery. Okay. So this is um, um, some property for the inductor. And we use inductance to quantify as the inductor. Inductor has inductance, inductance to quantify the ability that the inductor can uh, store the energy or produce um, oppose the voltage. So this is uh, a parameter to quantify the ability, how much in oppose the voltage the solenoid can produce. So how do we define the inductance? The inductance we define in this way. So if we increase the current, let me go here. If we increase the current, we will increase uh, the magnetic flux, okay? So we can do the ratio, the flux divided by the current as inductor. Then let's calculate the, um, the inductor uh, from this uh, equation. We know, and um, this is definition here, my definition. And from this definition, we can derive an equation. We know the uh, flux is equal to number of turns times magnetic field times the cross-section area. I, the number of turns constant, the area of cross-section is also constant. The only thing that can change with time or with the current is the magnetic field. The magnetic field um, in the solenoid is um, correlated with the current. So it depends on the, the current. And we have the formula that will be equal to the mu naung times the number of turns times the current over the length of the solenoid. Right? So we plug in to the, uh, the equation, we have n times, we have two n, so n squared, mu naung, we have the current, we have area over the current over the length of the solenoid. So the current cancel. So eventually we have n squared, number of turns 
times a constant mu naught times the surface area of oh, this is not surface area. This is a cross section area over the length of the solenoid. So this is uh, the determinant of the inductance from the geometry. And if we have the inductance, we can going to calculate as a resistance after the circuit goes to steady state. So steady state, the steady state current is here, but the voltage across the inductor, the voltage on the inductor is zero. Okay. Then we have Ohm's law, V over I. At a steady state, there is current in the inductor. There's some value, there's some value. But the voltage across the inductor is equal to zero. So the resistance is equal to zero. So that means we can treat the inductor as a wire as a wire, perfect wire. So just now we have a inductor connected with a resistor. This is inductance, this is a resistance. After steady state, we can simplify um, the circuit as a wire with a resistor. Uh, uh, with a resistor, so this is Y, this is a steady state. And um, you have to be careful, don't connect the inductor parallel with a resistor without any protection resistor. So if we connect in this way, at steady state, the inductor could be treated as wire, this is a wire. So that means the current will through, flow through the inductor without any resistance, and there's no current on the resistor. So in this case, the current goes to infinity and the battery damage. So we have to avoid this, this case. Okay, so I think this is the inductor. I'm talking about today. The next one I want to talk is uh, one of the homework and you last week. I find you have many problems uh, to solve this problem. Hold up, let me go here. Okay, this one. So this is the homework due last Friday. And I think um, if you don't remember it, let me read the description for you. So there are two plates. That's a circular plate, circular plate. So this is a conductor. Uh, but the, no, th this is a capacitor, not a conductor. So and uh, we know the radius of the capacitor, this one, and the separation is two centimeter. At the beginning, um, there are charges of the capacitor. And um, the two plates are suddenly connected to each other by a wire with a resistance. Okay, this wire has a resistance. So we can think about this as a capacitor uh, connected with a resistor in series that connects them along their symmetry axis. Therefore, a current will start to flow in the wire and moving charge from one plate to the other right after the wire has been connected. So when the wire has been connected, the time is zero. So we start the time from t equal to zero. And at that time, the current is 115 amp and flows downward. Okay, that means this is positive. This is negative. So 
So if we draw the circuit, that will be a capacitor connected with a resistor. This is a circuit. Okay, we have the capacitor, we have the resistance, and at the beginning, when time equal to zero, they are charged on the capacitor. And when we connect the resistor with the capacitor, and there's a current because the positive charge is going to flow to the negative terminal, neutralize the negative charge. So when time goes to infinity, um, when all the charge are neutralized, then there's no net charge. The current will stop. Time goes to zero. But immediately when the, uh, uh, the capacitor connected with the resistor, then we will have the maximum current when time equal to zero. That's 115 amp. So if we draw a diagram, I as a function of T, that will be stuff from the point of 15 amp, then down degrees to zero. Okay. So what's the electric field between the two plates? And in which direction does it point? What's the electric field? If the electric field actually is um, a function of time. So think about that because the charge uh, on the plate change over time. And according to the Gauss's law, we know the electric field um, flux is a function of the charge including in the closed surface over a constant. So if the charge is a function of time, then the electric field is also a function of time. Okay, so let's do this. Um, let's draw a Gaussian surface. Gaussian surface, a cylinder. We can draw a cylinder. Okay, to enclose the top surface. Then um, outside of the uh, capacitor, there's no electric field. The electric field is from the top down to the bottom surface. So the only down surface, uh, the bottom surface has electric flux. So the electric flux will be E times the area of the bottom surface equal to the charge included into the cylinder over the epsilon naught. So that means the electric field is equal to the Q over the A and epsilon naught. Okay, so this is the electric field. And let's see, what's the charge? And the area, we know the is a constant because we have the radius. But the charge, this charge is uh, the value when time equal to zero. But when time go to infinity, the charge is zero. So if the current has this curve, I think the charge should have a similar curve. So look like this. So we need to find the function of charge. Uh, the charge as a function of time. So how do we get this? And this is uh, exponential decay. So the exponential decay has a formula that will be Q equal to the maximum charge, is the maximum charge times the electric uh, exponential decay, that's the E as a power of minus T over a time constant. This is the, elect, um, the formula for the charge if it follows an exponential decay. And here we have a constant we call the time constant, pop. Oh. So what's this? This tell us how long does it take for the capacitor um, to release all the charge. So that will be the time from the maximum charge to zero. It's a time constant. And this is equal to the capacitance times the resistance. 
Okay, so this formula could be uh, written in this way. So Q, oh, Q equal to the Q noun, the maximum, that's a 0.338 times 10 to minus 16. Coulomb is the maximum charge times the exponential decay T over C times R. C times R. The R is 2500 ohm. How about the C? C is the capacitance equal to epsilon noun times the area over the distance. So this is a charge. Then the electric field will be the charge over the area over the epsilon now. Okay. So this is uh, Joseph. Oh yeah. Where where did you get that time constant idea? Like I, I just don't remember that from anything in class. Okay, anyway. so I tell you how I get this constant. Um. Do you know how to solve the derivative equation? If I have um, capacitor, I have the resistor, like this. So we know the current through the capacitor is equal to the current through the resistor. I C, I R. Okay. And how about I C? What's I C? I say actually is a charge. Uh, uh, hold on. Um, the current in the capacitor is equal to the the capacitance times the change of the voltage. Do you know this equation? Um, if you are not familiar with the equation, let me tell you how I get this one. So we know the capacitance equal to the voltage over the uh, the charge over the voltage. This is for everything is a constant. But if the charge and the voltage is a function of time, we have to do the derivative charge over V. And the charge we know is equal to the I times dt because the current equal to the charge over time. So we have the charge equal to time. Uh, equal to the current times dt. So we replace the charge, then we have I dt v. Okay. Then we get this relation. The current through the capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage on the uh, capacitor. Vc. Okay. And then we also can treat this a uh, circuit as a resistor, uh, a capacitor is going to charge the resistor. So the voltage of the of the capacitor is equal to the voltage of the resistor. So we have the V R equal to V C. Right. So that means we use this relation. I C, the current in the capacitor is C times E V C over DT equal to I R. The I R actually is the voltage on the capacitor over the resistance. So let's solve this relation, uh, this equation. This is the derivative equation. This will be equal to Vc minus Rc Evc over dt. So to solve this equation, we have many ways, but the solution for this equation is an exponential decay. That will be Vc equal to the maximum voltage over uh, times the exponential minus T over RC. So this is how I get the time constant. 
this is a solution of the derivative equation. So I just use this um, the circuit to get the relation of current with the voltage in the capacitor. Then I have this derivative equation. Then to solve this derivative derivative equation, I get the voltage is a exponential decay and the time constant is equal to the R times the capacitance. Do I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Then um, after we have the charge, then we can calculate the electric field. Then the next question is how to calculate the magnetic field. The magnetic field actually could be calculated through the Maxwell's equation. We know if the electric field is a function of time, then uh, the change of the electric field is going to induce magnetic field. This is from Maxwell's equation. We have, um, we have this relation because um, the change of electric flux is equal to mu non epsilon non. Uh, hold on, oh, hold on. This is mu non epsilon non. A magnetic field. Yeah, the magnetic field line integral is equal to constant times the derivative of electric flux. Then in a capacitor, we can simplify this relation as magnetic field equal to mu non epsilon non and derivative of electric field times the radius over r uh, over two. The radius is a distance from the center of axis to the place we are calculation. This is r. So you can find that because the e is an exponential decay So the derivative is also an exponential decay. You will get uh, one over RC electric field. So this is the e. So at one time equal to zero, the B is not zero because B is changed. This is solution. Okay, do you have other questions? So uh, let me stop here. I think we have 10 minutes for the quiz.